uh, When the Levee Breaks off Led Zeppelin IV, the unnamed album, is it, it's I mean it's e it's easy to play. What it is is they have of course, you know they have the echoes and delays and a bunch of compression on the drum sound. But you know when you have like a uh, what do they always talk about the the Binson Echo Unit, which I guess was just some regular piece of gear that was kind of made famous by. Uh, Andy John's talking about this recording. Anyway, so the basic beat is... Except, of course, by the nature of the delay that they put on, it goes... The, 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 the effect. And the way I always like to think of the effect that's put on there... You know, imagine like, you know, the the Greek god Atlas or whatever coming down and picking up a mountain, picks it up and he throws it on the ground. Of course, when it hits the ground, it, it'll go like, you know, what I mean? it won't just go. It bounces, you know. So you know, like something really big hitting the floor, like boom, boom. Like there's almost like a boom, boom, like an echo. Part of it's an echo, part of it's actually the thing bouncing twice. But that effect, boom, boom. Well, that's what they were doing with the echo unit to give it that really big sound. And in fact, I think there are some songs, I forget what, what songs they are, but there are a couple songs, or at least one song, if I remember, of course I can't remember at the moment, but where Bonham actually does go, like he will go. Um, now typically someone point out, when I play the bass drum, 90% of the time I do bury the beater into the head. I do, I keep it there, just the way I play. Um, you know, some guys don't. I don't always do sometimes. Sometimes, like, I think most of the time I do, but again, just the way I play, whether Bottom did or not, or you want to try, because if you figure out he did and you want to do it, whatever the hell you want to do, this is the way I do it. Uh, but again, um, in the tune, okay, and the cool thing about this song, of course, is that, you know, no click tracks, no sequencers, you know, you can hear Bottom speed up and slow down in various parts, even on the intro, when the drums are first start playing, before the vocal even comes in, you can hear Bonham actually play, and then he picks it up a little, then he slows it back down. You know, uh, you know, it must be like, I remember some, you know, younger people today, if you're watching this, but younger people maybe who don't like rock and roll, they hear a recording like that, and immediately they hear the, the, the time up bad because they've been so programmed for the past, you know, 20, 25 years or whatever to hear perfect sounding time. Uh, of course, initially done with tape, they play to a click, and then they... Either, you know, either play it all the way through with the click, right, you know, I mean, or they would duct tape together, they, you know, they do a bunch of takes and they'd splice it together, or, I remember some famous, I forgot what it was, uh, well, some metal drummer, we won't say his name, but I remember hearing in a, in a documentary or something where they would play, like, he played the whole song, they kept punching the drums to make them perfect, perfect, of course, before computers, Pro Tools and things, or before they had access to it. Of course, when you punch drums like that, you're not hitting any cymbals because you'll have decay, you'll have suddenly cymbals disappear or coming out of nowhere. So you're just playing the hi hat and the drums to achieve a perfect recording. Anyway, back to um, when the levee breaks. Yeah, anyway, you hear the time move a little. God bless mom. So, um, but it's all, and, and of course, then there's the change. I think when they do that, most of the time, he keeps the beat through. Okay. And I think most of the time, before he hits the crashes, he goes... He actually does go... I mean, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, although, uh, I do personally think this recording conceivably could have been slowed down to make the drum sound fatter, my opinion. Uh, actually, to me, sometimes I hear some Zeppelin songs that, I, that do sound like that. One, The Levee Breaks is one of them. Another one is No Quarter, the studio version. Um...
trying to make is sometimes when you slow the tape machine to go back in those days, tape machine, it would fatten up the sound a little because the nature at a fast speed, you know, sounds just that's why all right, the reverse is when you speed up, you know, me talking like this, you speed up, it's like I know I probably speak like that anyway. But of course the reverse is if I talk like this, obviously you slow it down, you know. So with discrete notes like drums, or if you slow it down, it's gonna be more like it, sp it spreads it out. Anyway, back to my, I think it is possible that when the levy breaks was slowed down a little bit. Um, uh, and of course, when they would do that, it's not like they would just necessarily at the mixing stage just t slow the tape machine down while they transfer it to a, a half-inch stereo or whatever. But, you know, they might, they'd slow it down and then Plant might sing to it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so then his voice sounds fine, but then the drums or the guitars and everything else is slowed down just to fatten it up or whatever. Um, anyway, back to when the levee breaks, um, but there is a part, because there's two times they go, the first time he has the accents, you know, and then he goes into the drums, which I think then there he still plays the, Starts it, neither here nor there, just for the diehards up and God. Um, oh, and then when when they come back, so then they come back into the verse after that middle, and, and Robert Plant's playing their marker, and that's Robert Plant playing their marker, he's a monster on it. And of course, then you hear the drums slow down a little more, like they come in out of that big part, and then. slow down and to get back into the you know part so then they do another verse and then of course then they bust into the in other words they bust I just cracked my hand with the drumstick but um da 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 ba da 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 and then you would bottom when they're playing along with that the second time Quite a bit in spots, but the particular fill I'm talking about is I think it, I think the he goes. That's the coolest thing in the world. I think that's just so beefy. You know, what's that? Just put, whenever he does those little things, that's why some people who don't understand Bonham don't get it. It's not that he was a Buddy Rich great technical guy or a you know, a, a Steve Gadd, who is a guru, God love him, and or, but he just played stuff just a certain way. He had a good amount of technique, but he just, like, heard stuff and just played stuff just a certain way, and, and the net result was, at least on the recording, certain fills would be in just the right spot. You know, a certain, just the right spot. It was any other place. Um, anyway, but back to the tape, um, speeding up or slowing thing. You know, when you listen to Houses of the Holy, you'll hear... In my opinion, of course, you hear like uh, the song remains the same and stuff. I mean, bon er, Robert Plant's voice sounds cranked up to me. I feel like they were almost maybe maybe they like slowed the drum sound or something to fatten up the sound. They had Robert Plant th sing it, and then they were like, "Oh wait, no, let's put the tape machine back up to the normal speed." And then they're like, "Oh my gosh, listen to Robert Plant's voice," you know. And when you listen to the end of that tune, yeah, he's going berserker. Um, it sounds funky. Anyway, back to this song. So they do that part in the song. Uh, well, however the lead is, there's a bunch of parts in there toward the end where he's like, I mean, I'm not exactly sure of the build up to that part, but it is so cool. Um, 
So again, I have in other videos some triplet, well, it might be in the Achilles last stand video or whatever, but to practice your bass drum, you go. one is there's sort of the gallop, the Achilles last stand gallop and stuff. So anyway, that's when the levy breaks. I'm trying to see if there's anything else on it, but I think that's it.